The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. I was wild when I heard this story first. Rebetzin Kanievsky, the, the, probably the greatest Rebetzin living today, the wife of the Gedolei Ador, the Gadol Ador, Reb Chaim Kanievsky Shalita, she says over that she knows personally this story. She knows, some of you might have remembered a few years ago, there was a very large mall in Haifa, and the mall at that time, a new mall, packed, I mean packed, I don't know if any of you have been in Israel, the malls are a pastime, like in the United States. Everyone is there. And it's a huge mall. Huge. And it's packed with how many tens of thousands of people on a daily basis. A miracle took place. There was a car that was parked in the parking lot underneath the mall, and the car was parked right up against the supporting beam of the mall. The car was filled with C4 explosives. It was put there by terrorists to go off to totally obliterate that supporting beam that held up the mall. And with that, it was going to be a chain reaction to the gas tanks of all the other cars that was going to send the entire mall off its keel. And you were going to have casualties of tens of thousands of Jews that day. Miraculously, somebody happened to have been walking by, saw some smoke coming out of the back of this car, ran over, called the Mishtara. It looked a little funny. They checked out the car. They caught it in time, brought down the bomb squad, and deactivated the bomb. Saved tens of thousands of lives in the Molen Chayf. And now, now I'm going to tell you the rest of the story. As the way Rebson Kanievsky says it over, she says about a month prior to this incident in the mall, there was a young lady that was traditionally religious, quasi-religious, not so religious, who came to Rebchaim Kanievsky, who came to them asking for a beracha because she had a tumor in her brain the size of a baseball. And the doctors did not feel that it was something they were able to take out. They did not think that she'd had a chance to live. And no matter what the doctors tried, it didn't work. And the doctors told her, it's just a matter of time. It was a young girl. The girl was broken to pieces. She came home that night, and she begged her parents. Her parents begged the doctors, try to operate something. Finally, the doctor said, okay, we have an inexperienced surgeon. He'll do the surgery tomorrow, but it's just practice for him, because we're telling you there's nothing that could be done. That night, this girl was in her bedroom. She began to cry, and she said, Hashem, now I see. The doctors can't help me. Nobody can help me but you. Hashem, there's no Bet HaMikdash today. I can't bring a Korban. I can't get a Kapara. So this is what I'm doing. And she ran to her closet, as Rebetzin Kanievsky explains. And she took out her wardrobe of clothing that should not be found on the back of Abat Yisrael, if it even covers that. And she brought it out to her backyard. And she made a bonfire. And she said, Hashem, we don't have a Bet HaMikdash today. But right now, here it is. Here's all my wardrobe, my entire clothing, all my non siniut clothing. Here's my korban to you. And she threw it in the fire. And it went up in smoke. Her entire wardrobe. The next day, she comes into the hospital. They gave her this young guy, a non-experienced surgeon, to do a very delicate brain tumor operation. And you could say in simple words, Hashem directed the surgeon's hands. And the operation was miraculous, and it was a success. It was a success. When all her friends heard about this, they were so taken, they were so inspired by the open miracle, that later on that week, when she came finally back home, they all came over, they brought their clothing with them, their own korbanot, they went outside to the same backyard, they lit up the fire again, and threw it in. Again, I'm not telling, God forbid, don't, don't get me wrong. Don't get me Anyone walks out tonight, oh, you went right to his class, how nice. What did he say? He said, go home, take your entire wardrobe, go out to a campfire. No, 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 not even close. Not even close. Telling you over the story of Rebetzin Kanievsky to bring out the point of how incredibly powerful in Hashem's eyes the concept of tziniyut for our young ladies really is. And how that, at times, is going to be the whole difference between our tefillot being answered and sometimes not as quickly. All the friends went, took all their clothing, threw it into this bonfire, and they all took her out together to the mall in Haifa. They were all there that day 
the day that the car, the terrorist put next to that supporting beam, underneath the mall, all these girls with this girl was in the mall buying a new Tsini'ut wardrobe that day. Says Rebison Kanievsky, you want to know why those 30, 40,000 people in the mall was miraculously saved by coincidentally somebody walking by the right car out of thousands of cars and pointing that car out to get the police to find the explosives in time before the bombs went off so the mall doesn't come crashing down, killing 30, 40,000 Jews? It was because of that group of girls. She saved their, they saved everyone's lives on their little korban. That little korban. Listen to this. I heard over, and this is brought in the Sefer Alin Lushabeach, that he says there there was a great rabbi in Israel by the name of Harav Luria. Harav Luria, who lived somewhere on the outskirts of Jerusalem, he was quickly rushing through the streets. And as he was on his way to yeshiva, he didn't see, nor did the car see him. An Israeli mishtara, a policeman, was coming, ripping down, roaring down one of the streets. The rabbi didn't see him. The policeman didn't see the rabbi. And sure enough, as the rabbi stepped into the street, the car hit him. The rabbi's leg was broken to pieces. The rabbi was in tremendous, enormous pain. The policeman comes running out of his car. And the guy's all shooken up because he just hit somebody. He runs up to the rabbi laying on the floor, holding his leg in enormous pain. And he says to him, Rabbi, what can I do to help you? The rabbi looks up in pain and says, Begin to be Shomer Shabbat. The policeman looked at him and said, What? Excuse me? I just hit you. Your leg is broken to pieces. I'm asking you, how can I help you? The rabbi looked and said, You want to help me? You want to help me? Start being Shomer Shabbat. The greatest gift that Hashem gave us. That will be the greatest help for me. The guy was so taken. There was a couple, a non-religious Chiloni couple, that was standing and watched the entire accident. And they watched the dialogue back and forth between the policeman and the rabbi in pain laying on the floor after being struck by the car. And when they heard the rabbi say to the policeman, start to be Shomer Shabbat, that's going to be the zechut for me to get better. That's the way you can help me more than anything else. They were amazed. They walked up to the rabbi, and they just wanted to make sure they heard with their ears right. They all got into the ambulance and followed the rabbi to the hospital. And it was at that point that when the rabbi started getting better, this couple came to the hospital, and they walked in and they said, Rabbi, I want to tell you something. Our entire life, we really believed that religious people were just some myth. We thought that the whole thing was just a whole made-up thing. But it's not possible that the laws of Judaism and Shabbat could be made up if someone like you, who was just struck by a car, and the only thing you have on your mind is for another Jew to start being Shomer Shabbat. That is somebody that his devotion to God is day by day, minute by minute, second by second. He takes Hashem with him everywhere. No matter what's going on in life, Shiviti Hashem Lenegdi Tamid. He has God right in front of him. And even at a desperate moment, he's not thinking about himself. He's thinking about Hashem and Hashem's will. An incredible concept. That is true devotion. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.